So, bro, Saj, Jazakumullah khair for coming, bro. We appreciate you coming. So, just as the beginning, we usually just get into people's lifestyles. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What's your name? Just a little uh, oh, history. Oh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, so, yeah, I come from a family of six. Okay. Mom, dad, two older brothers, one older sister. I'm the youngest. Um, born and raised around Oakland Road area. Okay. So you're born in this country? Yeah, I was born in this country. Yeah, like second um, generation or first generation? Um, first generation in this country. So your mom and dad? Was born in Bangladesh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I was born here. Um, Guys Hospital on the ends. And like that. <laughs> yeah, bro. And then, yeah, um, I grew up in, with my family, um, Oakland Road, E Street. Okay, yeah. So that's where I was born as a baby, grew up from there. Okay. Primary school? Primary school. I went to a primary school called Surrey Square. Okay, where's that? It's like based in E Street, Ellsbury area. Okay. So, yeah. That's still there, there today? It's still there. They knocked out Ellsbury. Yeah, um, some parts of it, yeah. They knocked down some parts of it. Okay. But that school is definitely there. I know Still the there. primary school you went to. Yeah. Okay. So how was yeah. you like in primary school? Because you said there were six of you, first generation. Yeah. So I went, so I was, by the time I started primary school, my brothers and sisters had already left. You were the youngest. Yeah. I was the youngest. So they had already left. And yeah, I just found it cool. I enjoyed it. I was just a little fat kid in school. You know, <laughs> okay. the chubby dude in school, yeah, yeah, man. I was the big you don't kid, look man. Look like that size now, but back in the day, that's yeah. the size yours. Oh, you know, the little tubby kid, man. <laughs> yeah, bro. Okay, okay. I was getting fed well, man. So, how was the dynamic like? Because you're the youngest, you're going to school. Mm. Obviously, you got your mum and dad, Islam. How was that all working out? Um, so, Islam was quite strong in our household, as from young, um, as because we're from Bangladeshi background, mum and dad will make us. Always read Arabic. Not only that, we will do our Bengali lessons as well on top of it. So You're strong in the language. <laughs> yeah, bro. So we just lessons after lessons. And yeah, my mum, I remember my mum will sit down with us with the books. Me and my brothers and sisters will sit in a circle and we always do Quran. Um, when I, I remember they, they was already on the Quran when, from what I remember. Okay. I start. Your older brothers. My older brothers and my sisters, yeah. Mm. And then I think, you know, like, especially like the Bengali community mm. and the Somali, they're kind of like, in terms of deen, quite strict and disciplined in terms of teaching the kids at least, you know, the basics. Yeah. You're able to read the Quran, memorize a few things, learn the Salah, learn the prayer and so Definitely. on. So, yeah. 100%. Mm. But for me, I found it kind of difficult learning it. Because mm-hmm. I said, like, at that time, I was learning. I had it in my head for like two weeks, three weeks. Then it just go, um, I forgot it. Okay, and that's the battle that I've been having with my Quran. But you used to go, you used to go uh, uh, to the masjid, to the mosque, and yeah, with my dad, I used and, to go a lot, and, and also take part in what they call it, yeah. uh, you know, madrasa or maktab and stuff. Um, I done that later. Mm-hmm. Um, toward my early teens, I start going the bleak, okay, etc. Staying in mosque and with dad or on your own, on my own. Okay, so um, yeah, so. My dad passed away when I was 13. Mm-hmm. So after that, that's when I stopped going to Tablik. And that had an impact on you too? It had a massive impact on me. And not only that, I had some brothers around me that was helping me. and Siblings or, or just... Um, family friends. Okay. And they're very religious. So they was, took me on the path of Allah to help me easy. And that's when I started taking it quite mm-hmm. serious at that time when I was younger. What's that? What's the... Some, some money rather than... Or get road. Ali with a bali. No, no, it's with Jamak to it's with Jamak to Bleak. He used to be. He is, he is, he is. I know him. Yeah, Taha's brother. His brother's name is Taha. I forget. And he used to be two Bengali brothers that used to live on Old Kent Road. He used to help a lot of the brothers. Um was was Uzair one? Zubair. 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 Yeah. Yeah, they're the, yeah, yeah, they're exactly. the ones that took me, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're they're very close family. And Elias, Elias. Elias. Yeah, yeah, Elias. Elias. Yeah, 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 the whole crew. Yeah, so, so I was with them. Kind of like, yeah. Okay. yeah, so I, growing up with them, mm-hmm. they was taking me to Tablik. I was going to the mosque with them frequently mm. um, until I got a little bit older and then I got distracted. You know. So in terms of secondary school, which secondary school did you go to? So I went to Woolworth School. So, so that's in the ends again, um, based in Oakland Road. So I was there, I done my full 
Is it six years we do there or five years? I think we've done the four, five years. Five years, yeah. We've done the four or five years there. Was you still the chubby kid? Yeah. <laughs> I was still the chubby kid till about year 10. Okay. Because <laughs> sometimes you're a bit chubby, but then you grow out of it as you're getting older. Yeah. Sometimes you see some kids that's chubby when they're young. By year 11, they're like the tallest kids and yeah, wide 100%. and all of that. So by year 10, year 11, I was starting to get taller and I started thinning down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Start being active. Starting to realise I need to... <laughs> yeah, man. What? Everyone started calling me... The, everyone's calling me fat boy, you know, okay, okay. like the fat kid. And What about schooling? What education-wise? How did you do primary-wise education um, and also in secondary education? Well, primary school, I was more focused. Mm-hmm. I was more interested and I enjoyed learning. Once I got to secondary school, I just found a start. Year seven, year eight, I was focused. Once I got to year eight, that's when my dad passed away. So after he passed away, I took some time out of school. I think I didn't even go to school for a good three months. Then I went back to school. Mm. I think I went back to school in year nine, actually. Mm. So I took maybe almost, I was just messing about, not going to school, just saying I'm too sad, et cetera. But I think in year nine, I fully went back to school. And then I was just distracted. I just couldn't focus around the wrong friends, not listening to the teachers, climbing out of school. It's interesting. You, know, you mentioned your father. May I have mercy on him and, you know, grant him gender a few times. So it's probably kind of like it probably hit you at that time mm. uh, in terms of uh, what was the impact? What, what, what did you feel? Uh, how was it? You know, um, what kind it, of loss was it? It hit me really hard because um, this is something I didn't mention. Um, growing up also, by the time I got to the age of six, seven, my mum and dad split up mm. and my siblings all went with my mum and it was just me and my dad. So I just stayed with my dad and I grew up with my dad. Up to 13, up to 12, 13. Yeah, up until, f- yeah, 13. I just turned 13 and he just passed away two weeks later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just, I was with him, just me and my dad. And then after he passed away, that's when I um, moved in with my mom. Okay. Uh, your older siblings, what kind of support did you get from your older siblings in, in, in that when your father passed away? Because you said um, they were much older when you, when you, they had finished primary school, when you got to primary school. Um, to be honest, um, it was just the standard help that everyone could do. Yeah. They was going through their own hard time and they needed their own comfort. And so it was really kind of tense. So everyone was just in their own world, in their own bubble, going through their own things. Mm-hmm. There's and a question I just for you, both of you, actually, because I think you mentioned the past emotional intelligence. Um, and I might be generalizing, so it might not be the case with everyone, but sometimes maybe in Muslim families, mm-hmm. again, maybe some, maybe maybe more than some, you know, the emotional side, the emotional support, mm. the empathy, the sympathy sometimes. Sometimes it comes from a angle where they are trying to say it's Islamic. So they might still get over it. Mm, yeah. But, you know, the process I'm crying, actually, when, he, you know, mm. he shed tears mm-hmm. when his Ibrahim died. Mm-hmm. One, of his, one of the companions said, oh, Mr. Allah, you're crying? He yeah. said, this is a rahmat, this is a mercy. So there is... You know, a concept of mercy, empathy, sympathy, which sometimes, you know, I think we don't have enough of. Mm-hmm. Some of us in our families, what, what do you think? Is, is that, you know, for both of you, do you think that's the case? Yeah, 100%. Mm. Yeah, I don't really... Well, I don't feel like I ever really get much sympathy from my siblings. and It's not every day, like, I don't remember my, my brothers and my sisters get with us, getting up and giving us a of a hug comfort in each other. So to tell you the truth, yeah, I don't remember too much. I, frequently when my dad did die, maybe for the first couple of days, we was hugging each other and that, but as we get older, it just wears away. What about from, from your dad when dad was alive? Did you have that um, compassion and mercy and no softness, no? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I did. From, from dad too? Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. 100% it got passed that. <laughs> okay. So that's probably one of the reasons is like a big loss and uh, impacted your education in secondary school. Yeah, hundred percent. I I took it as basically because it was just me. I grew up with him. I really didn't really, and I was still young, so I didn't really understand the world too much. So once he died, I was just like, oh, "Man, that's it. It's done. Finished. <laughs> like my dad's gone. I've lost everything." Mm-hmm. You know, 
I felt like the world was at an end. And that's the whole reason why I just didn't even go back to school for a whole while. And then when I went back, yeah, I just couldn't focus again. Mm. I just. So you said you went back in year nine. So nine, 10, 11, focus wasn't there. Mm. Did you also drift into other things? You know, let's say kind of. No, nah. like... to be honest, I didn't. I was just at home, trying to heal, you know. And then um, it got to the point where I met them brothers. Well, them brothers were coming around because they're family friends. They just start taking me to the mosque. And then it's from there. That's when I just start feeling a bit of ease. I start feeling a bit better. Then they start taking me for three days, Jamaat, etc. And then that's what helped me get over that whole situation. How long did you go with them? In so I was doing it for a good... I kept up about a year or two. Okay. Yeah, good year. You want to explain what Tablik is to the viewers? You're the imam. No, no, <laughs> just when they do like a retreat somewhere, do more about the deen. Mm. You can call it a retreat in in essence, basically, but a spiritual retreat. Yeah. Where you, you just go seclusion to yourself. You learn about the deen a bit that's more. That's it. And you push yourself, you know. That, that's yeah. how I kind of see that whole topic. So you just go um, give your time to Allah, that's it. Most, to different mosques, sometimes three days, sometimes yeah. longer. And then you go out in the area, you do your dawah, etc. So it's a nice, with a nice little mm. outing for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure I learned a lot. From it. Mm. So sometimes there, there it, are people yeah. that go out of your way, and and they're strangers as well. And sometimes people don't realize. I have a kind of short, not funny story, but when we was young, maybe I don't know, sixteen or whatever. Yeah, it was Eid. And uh, obviously, we have a time that you meant to come home. So we didn't come home. So my dad just rang me. And he's like, look, you didn't come home this time. Wherever you are, stay there. So me, my cousin, we looked at each other. And if I've got that call, it means the same for all of them. Yeah. So I said, look, Pops just rang. He said, you ain't come in for this time. So wherever we're staying, we're staying out. So there was a part of us that was like fun. Like we can do whatever we like. <laughs> the other part is like, where are we going to sleep tonight? Yeah. So for the majority of the night, we was just playing. I'm talking like we was and we went on one train to another area, then one bus to east. We mm. just going all over, just having fun. Yeah. <laughs> it got to about three, four o'clock. We're thinking, obviously, we need to sleep somewhere. Yeah, Where yeah, are we going to yeah. sleep? One of my cousins, I don't know how he came up with this place. He's like, I don't know what, this one place that's always open. Mm. So right, let's go there. I was walking through. You know, like when you watch movies and there's this little dark alley and there's like a, like a crow in a corner, like, and it's like a church in a corner and it's all yeah. scary. Well, like, that's how it was. It was all holding hands. We walked through it. When in this place, it was dark. I just see bare people sleeping. I'm thinking, actually, what's this place? But he's like, I don't know. I've been here before. You look after you. <laughs> I've been said, there. <laughs> what is this place? Well, Sajjah's in there. Sajjah's probably in there. In there bro. I slept. We slept for like three hours. Yeah. Actually, someone kicked me in two hours. Yalla, yalla, up, up. I'm thinking, oh, I'm sleeping. Dad, pray, up, up. Pray yeah, I didn't know that. Obviously, I'm thinking, what's this thing? Actually, we got up, he made us pray. Mm. And then we got to a stage, they was like, oh, we're going to go to another mosque. I'm thinking, actually, we didn't sign up to this. <laughs> yeah. So we was there from Fajr until about midday. I'm thinking, actually, we didn't, they gave us food. They gave us everything. Mm. And they're strangers. So there's a funny side to it, which is obviously we find a place and we're, we're praying or whatever. But the other side, the spiritual side, a lot of people don't understand is that these are strangers. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? There's it. nothing in it. For that's what that's what the amazing thing about Islam is, isn't it? Mm. It's like brotherhood. Yeah. You know, it's there's a, nothing in it for strong. it. Apart from your betterness. That's it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And it makes you a better person, to be honest, when you see something like that or when you're in that environment and someone is helping you. Mm. Or they'll be like, yeah, sleep there or what do you want to eat? There's food, yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there, it makes there isn't you... There is this thing of like, why like, oh, here? Yeah, it makes you feel important a bit. <laughs> And sometimes that's, you know, Allah's way of bringing someone to help you yeah. and give you some sort of support that you didn't expect. 100%. It's, you know, Allah looking after you at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. 100%. So moving on, you're, you're, you're in your nine now. You're saying you're starting to fade away from the deen, eh, not the deen, but the, the core reasons you're meant to be in school, you started not taking it serious. Mm. And obviously one of the reasons you said is because your pops passed away. You thought there's no kind of point kind of thing. Yeah. What other kind of things would you say added to that? Would you say there's other things that you can remember that to, that made you think, now nah, forget school? Or... Um, you know what? I just felt like, you know, sometimes when you just feel like 
I just felt like I was, you know, well, I could just do whatever I want now. Mm. Is that because Pops is not there? Yeah, I just felt like the important man, the big man's gone. Mm. Like, who, are, who do I need to listen to now? Mm. And I was that that. Were your older siblings brothers or sisters? Um, two older brothers and one older sister. Okay. Yeah. So usually, especially in the Muslim family, you know, the oldest brother would take the the lead. Yeah, and he did. He, like my brothers are serious. <laughs> like when I messed about, they they will be there to you know give me a good beating. <laughs> okay, it's not the same. It's it wasn't the same. No, because like when a dad is telling you off and telling you to do something, it's like it's not the same when a brother's telling you to do it. Mm. If you know what I mean, mm. like you will respect your dad. You know what I'm saying? But when your brother's, you're not going to take him serious. But usually, I mean, look, in terms of, uh, uh, you, you know, it's a discussion that we've had where there's like society where the father's some completely not there. Mm. Some there, but not there. You know, mm. they're there physically, but emotionally and the negative impact that has on kids, mm. the father figure. So sometimes, you know, marriages don't work out. There's divorce and stuff. And sometimes, let's say it's, it's it's a sister or a lady, she doesn't want the kids to be involved with the dad, not knowing yeah. the negative impact that has on the kids. Yeah. Fine, the relationship hasn't worked out, but that's still the dad. Mm-hmm. He needs to be involved. Yeah. When dad's not on the scene, you know, it's, it's take, it takes a lot out of, you know, the it kids does. and their development and so it on. It does, it does, it does. A hundred percent. Because even when, um, so basically that's my teenage years without dad now, mm. it was hard. It's like there's not. I don't have a father figure now, mm. you know, to show me how to become a man. Mm. And that that vital years of my life, I needed to so, yeah. support. Yeah, so and did, because I didn't have that, mm. I just kept going down the wrong road. So you know, like you left school. Mm. What did you do after leaving school? Did you was it employment? Was it college? Was um, it so? Yeah, work? I left school and I done my GCSEs. That yeah. okay? Fairly. <laughs> Some good, some bad. But uh, yeah, I went to college for like a month. And then because I didn't get the grades I want, I was meant to get, I couldn't do the courses I wanted to do in college. So there's the only option they allowed me to do as electrician. Okay. So I've done it for one month and it got to the point I was like, you know what, this isn't my life. I don't want to be an electrician. I just um, walked away from college. And then... What did you do after that? I just got into music. Straight away? Yeah. Now I was... Fairly into music from like 15, 16, like just playing around with it. But when I left college, that's when I fully just thought, you know what, I'm going straight into music. That's what I want to do. Mm. It's what I enjoy. It helps me get stress off my mind. It feels therapeutic for me. Mm. And that's what I went for. When you say music, do you mean uh, yeah, producing? Do you mean... Yeah, so at that time I was producing music. I was making, composing. Okay. Beats, okay, instrumentals, okay. etc. Right, and sorry, just aside of that, in terms of nothing, in terms of road life, not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> no. oh, we're gonna come to that, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah, so you got straight to music, and then so how old are you now? Eighteen, about seventeen now. Seventeen, eighteen. A- any question? Because you know what, from a, let's say, like I said, you know, Bengali families are generally. You know, like like Somali is kind of like strict in terms of mm. uh, religion, you know, Dean aspects. Yeah. So did you have doubts in terms of, look, you know what, you know, my parents, or my family, they're probably thinking, I'm thinking, is it okay for me to do this? Is it mm. halal? Is it haram? Was that going through your mind or? No. So I just felt numb. Okay. So yeah, after leaving my, losing my dad, just like, I became this numb person. Still at home? Still living at home? I was at home till I was 17. And then, yeah, my mom kicked me out when I was 17. Okay. So after that, yeah, so them whole years, it was just basically just numbness. Mm-hmm. So Hannah, where did you stay when you got kicked out? So in the beginning, um, I was just on the streets, sleeping with friends, like, you know, sleeping in cars, etc. you know. And then eventually, um, I think I went to the council with all my bags. <laughs> I was like, look, I'm street homeless. They ended up giving me a hostel. And then I just, that's it. I was just in the hostel life for a couple of years. And then I met this girl when I was 19 years old. You know, like, then I was just, you know, in and out with girls, etc. Mm. And then 
six years later now, that's when um, I start mending relationship with my mom. And now, currently, I live with my mom, take care of my mom. Yeah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Music-wise, then, you said you, you, you was in it from young. So how come you got into that? Because, um, so my brother, my older brother, and he's got a, um, a good friend called Carl, they opened up a studio and wore a phone called Unit 10. Okay. And... This was like the hub for every like all the rappers from the ends. Everyone going to this studio. When they opened up, yeah. When they opened up, my brother was basically the he was run, doing the business side of things. Carl was the engineer, producer of things, making everything happen. And then I was a little kid, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen year old, going to the studio with my brother at them times. And then I just, it, I just took a sudden interest into it. And I was like, wow, this is. Very interesting, and so you saw him doing the producing. No, my brother was doing the more of the business side of things. I see Carl doing all the producing and engineering, and I was like, "That's very interesting." And not only that, when I was young, I used to hear music, and I used to always hear beats, and I used to be like, "Oh man, that sounds sick!" I wish mm-hmm. how do I, I want to make that beat? How do I learn how to make that beat? So when my brother opened the studio, it just like I was like, you know what? It just makes sense. So I just I need to be here. <laughs> So I just used that. And yours was, again, more producing engineering? So, yeah, producing. And engineering came after, because at that time, then time, then, like, you wasn't really making no money from producing, etc. So, and I was living alone, and I had to start paying bills, and, you know, I had to buy food and that. So I learned engineering. Just so engineering, I, what do you mean? Engineering is when you're in a studio and you're recording an artist. So if an artist has come and done a studio session, then the mic, like, recording, and okay. I'm over there on the computer recording it. Okay, so I saw producing good. as that. I thought that was no, producing, producing is like... Pro- you just make the beats. Com- that's really, yeah, making beats or someone that's put a whole song together, basically. Okay. Yeah. The engineering is the recording of the individual. Yeah, it's the recording of the vocals, okay. mixing, mastering it, making it sound good, that finished end product. Okay. And while you're obviously getting into it, uh, how was the the dean side? How was the religion side? Were you so, praying? Were you you know? Yeah, no, so this is when it start deteriorating. Yeah. So the dean start deteriorating, and then I start taking music as a massive interest in my life. And then, obviously, it was always a hit and miss. It wasn't always doing well. I was always struggling. Um, with music because he wasn't paying the bills. Like even though it was, like it was, back in then, there was like maybe five pound. The most he would make is twenty pound, thirty pound a day. I was going home, mm. and you know I'm living by myself, and these times I'm smoking, like you know, just a heavy smoker. You know, then I go buy my food dinner. Then I got a stool somehow because you still have to pay towards rent. Like I was on housing benefit, but there's a service charge that you still have to pay towards it. So I, I had to make sure the math didn't really make sense. Yeah. Business. So yeah, and that's how because he wasn't doing so so great. That's why I ended up, it's the road now, that I ended up getting into the roads and then finding myself I was selling stuff, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, et cetera, just to, it's just how I could live because mm. it was hard living alone and just getting by. Mm. Some, then, some, some, some viewers might say, well, why not get a job? Yeah, but I've tried and I've gotten jobs. The most, I've gotten jobs and I've had jobs and then it didn't obviously work out. And then I was one of them guys. I kept applying and applying and applying and applying and applying and not getting no feedback back. I just end up. It's the name, it's the name. <laughs> it's the name, but it's inside. You're like, that sounds yeah. like weird. Hey, what's that? <laughs> Seriously. That guy that done a test. There was a guy I told you, he done a test. Uh, I forgot. But anyway, some guy he done a test and he put Muslim name Muhammad. Mm-hmm. And he put, I don't know what other name, maybe Bob, let's say. Yeah. yeah. And they had the same credentials. Same everything, university, like, nah, same they jobs. Know him. <laughs> and I think the ratio, if I'm not correct, I need to research it, but what it was like, the amount of times he put one in Muhammad and the amount of times Bob put in, the same amount of times by the, with it, to the same people, he got nine more replies than him. Nine more replies. Yeah, that's crazy. So sometimes when people talk about, oh, what's racism? And that is racism right 100%. there. Is that you can have just a name, Mohammed, Jamal, 
even they've been they've been they even use Jamaican names like Jermaine. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Jermaine or you know like typical mm. names that you might just hear maybe even them they had the harder times as well. Mm-hmm. So I can understand why mm. many people back in it, and even today, you can try so hard and the system can still be against you. But again, obviously it's never an excuse to go into the to the gang gate culture or whatever, but yeah. it does make that life a bit more harder to be on a straight mm. path. Hundred percent. But do you think do you think also there was a, a a understanding that especially kind of like you know the selling short in drugs and stuff look mm-hmm. it's haram I shouldn't be doing mm-hmm. was that there uh, at that time no like at that time now it's there obviously I'm older now at that but, time because that's one of the things I asked was who is it it's mm-hmm. it's like yeah, yeah at that time I was just thinking about how to live and but just, deep down I mean. Uh, t- to me, that would be like a basic Islamic understanding. Obviously, I know it deep down. Yeah, okay. But you want to make ends meet, basically. Someone, yeah. Do. I'm just trying to live at this yeah, point. There, there is a level of cognitive dissonance as well. Like, mm. like you, you shun that. You know it's there, but you shun it. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? Mm. You, you keep doing. What it's you're like doing. I forcefully blocked it out. Yeah, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't like. If anyone talks to me, I'm just blocking. Like, I don't want to talk there. about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me just do my thing. I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna pray for my forgiveness, and mm. and that's what I always had in my head. I'm gonna pray for my forgiveness. I'm gonna change one day when I get to forty. And all that. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to ask a question again, both of you. So let's say you're engaging with somebody like that, and they've got that kind of like perception. Look, I'm blocking it. Mm. How can you? open up their heart to make them understand and make them think and reflect on like they shouldn't be doing it what, what would be an approach to it mm. for me I always go back to experiences man you take that person out you know uh, I, I think I saw someone uh, put up something about if you put a fish in a in a container it grows to wherever that container is mm-hmm. but if you let that same fish on I think it was a shark if you let that same shark in the ocean it grows to whatever length is meant to get to. So sometimes the environment traps you into a mindset thinking this is what life looks like. But when you come out of that scene, so if I took you, I don't know, from Peckham and I took you to Chiselhurst, as some people think I'm from there now, mm. and I showed you the upper life. You mm. know what I'm trying to say? Like, this is the kind of cars they drive. This is the yeah. houses that they, they live in. Spirituality, maybe they go to church, whatever it is, but you show a different life mm. to what you live in. Maybe that kicks in a little thing. Actually, I can live this life. I don't have to mm. watch my back. I don't have to live this type of life. That guy's a businessman. This person is a dentist. Mm. That person is this. And they're making much more money than a drug dealer. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say yeah. to you? So I think experiences is definitely... Because you can only talk to someone so much. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But if I show you, look, I'm living that life. Me, when I was doing it, I felt like I didn't really have anyone... Telling you anything. Yeah. I was showing you. I didn't really have no elders there telling me, yo, this ain't right. Don't do this, don't mm. do that. Not them type of orders, you know. Mm-hmm. You get me? Like, I mean, like, my brothers and si- like, I'm going to be telling me, yeah, don't do that, don't shot. No, 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 no. You expect it from them, yes? Yeah, I expect it from my brothers, you know. But the like, environment, there was an other kind of like, you know, like when they say that the community yeah, the, builds up. Yeah, you got the like, you know, get me the normal people that would, you know, approach you, mm. like, you know, and feel like, you know, this ain't good, you know, just mm. fix your life and that. But then you just got the people that you want to come and tell you these things, but they won't tell you these things. Mm. They'll just let you do your Role thing. Role models you look up to, basically. Yeah. yeah. They're just there looking at you, letting you do your thing, letting you make the choices to ruin your own life. Mm. If you know what I mean? Mm. Was there was there engagement from others outside your kind of like circle or, or friends that are saying, you, it's okay what you're doing? Were there others coming to you and saying, look, Saj, you know what? You yeah, know. I, I've had people say, you know what? Mm. Um, just do what you got to do, man. Just make sure you pray. And okay. just make sure you ask for your forgiveness. And that. Even that, that's a reminder as well. You know, sometimes yeah. that, that as well. Pray, but ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness, why? Because, you know, you, if you reflect on it, yeah. they're telling you, okay, you're doing to wrong. To be honest so. with you, it's now, like, as I got a bit, that's how it was for the first couple of years. But as, it, as I got older, it got to the point where my dean started coming back. Okay. And you started praying and stuff. I, and like, yeah, over the last few years, I started praying. What would you say kickstarted that, though? Oh man, all these people dying, man. Mm. Like, there's a lot of people dying, man. Like, I've attended so many funerals in the last couple, of, like two, three years. That was a reminder. It's a massive reminder. And I'm like, yo, man. That could be me. Yeah, man. Like, it could be me tomorrow. Like, you get me? So, these are the things that's been really opening my eyes up. Like, all these deaths. 
And yeah, man, like it's gonna be too late one day. Mm. Inshallah. And moving on to the music scene now. So that studio was it called a studio ten? Um, no, this first studio was called Unit Ten. Unit Ten, uh, yeah. Unit Ten. So, did you get more involved into it? Did you kind of like take the leadership role in there? Yeah, I did. Cause, that um, so, yeah, I learned basically the engineering side of things. Now, and I was helping Carl, like managing the session or doing the sessions, you know, so just I could make a little bit of money. But obviously, it wasn't enough. So, like I said, that's when I had to do other things. Okay, ended up selling. That's when I ended up, you know, getting into mixing up in the street life and, you know, silliness and et cetera, you know. And after that, did you get back into like, uh, you know, uh, producing music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was doing all of that and I was doing music so at the same that. time. Okay. In the so, same in the same kind of like studio, Unit 10 or something? Um, no, I wasn't doing none of my like selling stuff or anything from the studio or anything. Okay. I was like, I had my own place of doing. Okay, no, I mean the music. That was the. Did you start up another studio? Another kind of like. Or was oh, now like over the years, I've done a few more studios. So okay. they, yeah, that studio closed down after a while. Okay. My brother ended up doing his thing. The Carl ended up getting a different studio somewhere else, because they um they knocked the place down to build apartments. Okay. So that eventually had to go, but now we've all come back together. Okay, and whole, now we've got the whole this, team, your brother yeah, and Carl and stuff. Yeah. yeah, okay. And now we've got this amazing building. My brother's got the school. He's got a school upstairs. Okay. Wait. What what kind of school? So it's basically um, it's a program. We teach in maths, English. Oh, okay. Oh, music, I thought it was media um, or something. Media. Okay, yeah, media. Okay. So it's for like bad kids and that you know kids that get kicked out of school and stuff like that. Get them back on the right now, etc. So my brother's got that. It's called OMG Education upstairs. And then downstairs, I got my studio. Carl's got his studio, and I got my separate. Studio. Yeah, Carl's got separate. You got separate. Yeah, What's your we've one got called? our own studio each now. Oh, okay, mashallah. Yeah, so yeah, man, coming from where we come from, having that studio in the middle of if you ever saw where the studio was, man. Yeah, <laughs> the original, what you the original unit ten, man. You have to go through some crazy little alleyways, dead ends. You will think you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna kill you. Okay. Proper yeah, slums. Yeah, you proper slums, bro. And in terms of artists, so which kind of artists? I mean, being from South London, have you worked with some of the kind of like well-known artists that, that are from South London gigs? And yeah, yeah. So I'm I mainly work with gigs. Still, still. Yeah. Okay. So I'm currently even working with gigs now. We're working mm. on an album right now. Okay. So yeah, and what about our brother Tiny Boost, man? Yeah, man. I yeah. work with him as well, man. That's my bro, man. <laughs> I watched that the other day. <laughs> yeah, I watched a few of them. I was like, yeah, man, these interviews are looking serious. <laughs> like, what am I going to go do on there? <laughs> but they're a unique story. Yeah, man, but these guys, nah, 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 you got to go on there, man. <laughs> so a few things with that, number one, you know, in terms of, okay, you know, working with these artists, some of them, alhamdulillah, you know, Tiny Boost is a Muslim, mm-hmm. Geek's not a Muslim. How's the relationship you as a Muslim with the non-Muslim artists? Is there respect um, for yeah. Dean and stuff? Um, all my friends that ain't Muslim, they're so yeah, they're very respectful of the dean. Mm-hmm. They don't ever get interfere. They understand, mm-hmm. and it's it's never it's it's never affected mm-hmm. our relationship. As long as like the boxer won, you want to fight. <laughs> There's a little interview like for a weekend. Yeah. Somebody sent me something. I forget his name, and you know, say so, so the first thing. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Oh dear, um, yeah. about, is he talking about bouncer? No, no, this, no, is, recent. this is a recent. This is a recent, this is a recent, I think. Yeah. A proper boxer. Yeah, he's a Muslim, no, no, American, no, no, American. Oh, okay. Sorry, bro. <laughs> no, but there's, there's, like a, there's a lot of them do that now, isn't it? Yeah. Straight after the fight. So that's what you're doing in the studio, you know? Yeah. Not with Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> represent. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So it's, it's respect. Yeah, no, man, everyone respects it, man. Mm. And then vice versa, we show respect to them. Mm. It's like, you know. Okay. Music is music. Our religion is our religion. Mm. You know, our family life is our family life. Every, everyone keeps their life mm. separate. You know, and, and also you being from an Asian background mm. in terms of engaging with, let's say, non Asians. The, the, the artists that you're working predominantly what mm. Afro Caribbean, Caribbean, yeah, Afro Caribbean. How's that kind of like relationship? So for me, I just to me, I just find it normal because mm. that's how I was raised. I was raised into that life. Mm. I was like, I was raised in an area full of Afro Caribbean people. And obviously, after my dad died, and my mom kicked me out when I was seventeen, and when I was on the streets, living on my own all them years, and it was 
the pe- them, my friends that kind of was there for me, raised me type of thing, showed me the ropes. I, I think that is also, you know, unique to South London. Mm. The kind of people, you, you know, white, black, Asian people mix. Mm. And that kind of like, you know, barriers and divides. Mm. I'm sure there's a bit there, but not to the extent where it's in other parts. Mm-hmm. Because people mix, you know, your school, I'm sure it's always mixed yeah, times, it secondary mixed. school, then your area and stuff. Yeah. And alhamdulillah, you know, that's why you find sometimes even the non-Muslims in South London mm. have an appreciation of Islam. Yeah. Because they're mixing with Muslims. Yeah, with them, 100%. So. It's a mix, it's a, it's a massive mixed culture. Mm. 100%. So moving forward then, you said obviously you're doing a music thing. You wasn't really, you can say, practicing. Then you started practicing due to the last... What couple of years you're saying? Last few years, I just start. Um, yeah, I start practicing again. Okay. Start taking it serious again. And how has that changed your life? Um. Well, from what it was, it's it's um massive impact because I'm praying now. Mashallah. I'm praying near enough. I'm doing most of my prayers now. Mashallah. Um, reading Quran, like you know, I'm I'm forced myself to learn it. Um, to be honest, at a younger age, I used to go to his house. <laughs> to Behind the scenes, yeah. at his house. <laughs> oh, we're gonna put your picture up. <laughs> you get me, and I learned how to pray and everything at his house. Inshallah. So yeah, so you need to do a podcast with the uh, cameraman. <laughs> I'm sure I'll find out. <laughs> yeah, we, but yeah, and and then I just start taking it like last in the last three four years. I'll say I just start taking it serious, and then. Bro, I was in this in a bad state, in it. Like my life was in a really bad state. I was smoking a lot of weed. Mm-hmm. I was drinking heavily, and it was taking a massive toll on my life. To drinking everything, and then now I've completely stopped drinking, Inshallah. fully. And then now I'm just focused. Inshallah. And now I just now obviously, like I said, COVID, all these deaths, been through a lot in life, seen a lot, you know, and it just made me open my eyes. I'm getting older now, as well. And then, yeah, man, I just want to be closer to God. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, you, would you say there's other, like, since you started practicing, that there's other brothers that give you guidance, help you, push you? Or do you feel that sometimes maybe people push you away because of your past? Or People, uh, to be honest with you, doing the music thing, growing up, doing it, people used to push me away a lot or try to put me off, off of Dean. Not even the music, just off of Dean. As in, like, you can't do the same at the same time, kind of? Yeah, they were like, oh, you can't pray. Mm. Oh, you can't do this and pray. You can't do this and pray. Oh, your prayer is not accepted. No way. Oh, you can't do this and do that. Mm. So people used to try to put me actually off of the dean. Mm. Not say, no, stop music. You know what, do this. You get me? Why are you doing dean and you're doing that kind of thing? Yeah. And mm. it, used to, it used to actually work. And that's what did kind of made push you away. Yeah. yeah. It kind of made me shoot away because everyone like, you can't sell drugs and pray. You can't go do bus a shot and go to the mosque and do your, like, you know, that doesn't work out. Mm. So I was like, you know what, I'm just, well, if I, my dean ain't going to pay my bills right now. Mm. And that's the honest truth. And that's how I saw it there and then. Like, I think their intentions might be, you know what, I don't think they're doing an intention of like putting you off dean, but they're doing it in a, maybe not the right way, but in a way of stop this. Mm. If you're going to be doing this, but do this also the dean side. I think that's what, what's the angle. But you know, Saj. So, do you think at that stage right now, actually, you know, so you know, you're praying your salah. Is there a kind of like a battle within yourself to say, look, or question? Yeah, I battle every day, man. Yeah, I battle that I go through every day. Yeah, but in terms of more look. Should I be doing this? Could I do something else? Should I come out of this? It's like, what goes through my mind is like, even if I know if I'm doing something bad or if it is bad, it doesn't put me off for praying no more. Okay, alhamdulillah. And I'm like, you know what? If I go in and had a smoke, or if, like, I don't sell drugs no more. Like, mm-hmm. I'm saying this is my past life. Mm. Like, it wouldn't, like now it won't stop me. Like, Nothing could stop my prayers now, mm-hmm. and that's how I feel now. And I'm at that stage now. Mm-hmm. Like what you like, what anyone tells me, like, cool, it could be bad. What I do, it could be haram. Okay, I've done it bad, but I'm still not gonna stop praying. I'm still gonna carry on with my prayers. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna go pray for forgiveness. You no, know? 
back in the day, people used to actually say, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's not count, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's, what's the point? You know, like, and I'm like, right, cool, what's the point? I'm not going to then. Yeah. And then he just is a, a spiral end. Yeah. And it just gets worse and worse. Yeah. And obviously I've gotten older now. I'm seeing sense. I stopped doing certain things in my life. And I'm just at, I'm just got a strong connection with Allah now. Mm. And just, I'm just at that point now, man. Just, I pray, you know, mm. and I hope it, it helps me get through whatever I'm going through. It doesn't have to be like, you know what, one or the other. And remember, everybody's got weaknesses, shortcomings. So with our weaknesses, shortcomings, um, you know, my one might be something else, I'm going to achieve something else, but opportunity to do good, we should still do it because on your, the day of judgment, mm. you know, when the balances come, okay, I've got my shortcomings, mistakes and sins, but maybe some of those good deeds will, you know, yeah. have always kind of like the, the shortcomings are negative. But the other thing I want to ask, Sad, so, you know, with, and that's something I have a discussion with some of the brothers, uh, the Muslim rappers and stuff, you know, in terms of what we're producing, the you know the the production side if we are producing and in that kind of like production mm -hmm. there is something which is negative mm -hmm. uh, uh, negative in a sense that it's something which is you could say promoting something which is let's say impermissible haram and so mm -hmm. on because you're producing do you think you would have a what's the word i'm looking for you, you would have a yes. uh, so what, what's the word An influence, or influence or a sin in it yeah, um, yeah, because you're a producer and stuff. Would that? How would you think about? Well, that? I get told it's a, it's a sin. You mm. know, I always get told this. I've been getting told music is a sin. And so not just the music. I'm saying, look, so look, a, a rapper's come and you're producing the music, but a rapper's got you know what? Yeah, uh, oh, well, in there and stuff. Oh, no, nah, I don't. That's not. I, I I don't know. To be honest, for me personally, I don't see that's nothing to do with me. Okay. I've done my job. He's paid me for my job. He's come to my studio. He's paid me for my his service. I've done a service for him. Mm -hmm. What he goes to do with that song or whatever after has nothing to do with me. Okay. And that's how I So do. you want to take part in the production of the of the of the video? The, um yours will be just the sound, is that what you're saying? Or I'm I've but there's been times I've been in videos and that. Okay. But I'm like whatever they do, it's not my I don't see it as is you see that separate from what I'm doing with this artist. Yeah. Okay. Whether they wanna it's their song, you get me? They just it's basically like you got a food shop and someone's come to buy food from your shop. Whether they go to throw it in the bin or not, mm -hmm. it's their choice, isn't it? So it's you get me it's down to them. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Man. And also environments like let's say so studio, you know, that that's an environment, fine. You know, you're recording, mm. you, you know, you're you're producing and so on. Uh, would you also, let's say, they are, y you know, uh, showcasing their their music at a event, at a party? Mm -hmm. Would you be? Would they invite you? Would yeah, you be there? I used, yeah. <laughs> okay. I would, and I used to partake in a lot of the events. And what about now? Um, now I've kind of calmed it down. Okay. Would you say that's that's a that would be a concern? I'm coming from a kind of like Islamic perspective. That would be a boundary for me to say. Look, you know what? In general, yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. In general, yeah, because um, I don't know because I think it's one is because I don't drink no more as well. Okay. But when I used to drink, I used to enjoy going out and mm -hmm. etc. It's a different type of vibe. And now I don't drink. I've even gone out a couple of mm -hmm. times with a clear vision now because when I go out, it's a clear vision. It's not the same vibe, you know. It's you let me. You're just there. <laughs> okay. So yeah, but I have toned it down a bit. So I don't go out. I never even really used to go out, like, just on a Friday night. See how people just go out on a Friday, Saturday night. Mm -hmm. I've never really done that. I've only gone out if it's, like I say, it's for artists. He's got a booking mm -hmm. and he's got a show. I'll just attend because I might have recorded that song or I've recorded that and I want to hear it. And I'm like, yeah, it kind of gives me a bit of inspiration, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why... Another reason why I would attend okay. these things, but well. not so much for girls now because okay. I'm a married man now, so I got married. Inshallah. Okay. So yeah, so I don't, I, I don't look for girls and mm. like at these things. No, <laughs> and not alcohol. I don't look for alcohol. So it's crazy. Yeah. For me, how I think about it is, see, when you're living this life of like uh, drugs, alcohol, partying, all of that stuff, and then now you've come out of it. Like, how do you find it in the sense of, was that exciting 
and you didn't want to ever give it up or did it have a lot of drawdowns and now that you're so-called, I wouldn't say you're, where, where, where you're practicing, we're all trying mm. to practice in our own way, but mm. you're trying. Mm-hmm. Now that you're trying, is there a sense of you that feels bored? Because a lot of people, when they look at religion and mm. practicing people, they think it's boring. All you do is pray. You know, like just because you watch so many movies, it makes you think of religion in a particular way that that's where it is. So how do you find it? Are you bored? Yeah. In, You're not in, raving no more. So how, how in you, the how beginning, you... it was kind of boring. Mm. Like, yeah, man, I had nothing to do. Yeah. Like even studio sessions, like we're at studio, we'll have a drink. Like we used, well, I used to have a drink with everyone and yeah. we'll be smoking. But now it's like the studio session is all clear vision. Now it's always just focused. But how is that feeling of being focused and then to the, op- the other side? Like, now, I'm, I'm, at this current yeah. moment, it feels amazing. Okay. It feels amazing because... I'm just focused now, man. Before, I was just... It was messing my life up, man. But like, you didn't see it at that time? No, I didn't. At that time, I thought I couldn't give it up. I don't want to give it up. Mm. I'm enjoying it too much. It takes the pain away, you know? Like, you know, the stress, bullshit, just forget about it. You know what I'm saying? Well, he is... Point, Serge, is, is a good point. <clears throat> because that's a perception given, you know, for you to be a good Muslim, righteous person, mm. religious person, you can't be happy and you can't have fun. Mm. Yeah, so you now praying. You're not drinking. You're not smoking. Mm. You're going parties. Alhamdulillah, you're praying your salat and so mm. on. Are you enjoying being a Muslim? Yeah, uh, yeah. Is there other things you are doing within Islam which are permissible to do? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So, what do you mean, like what? Um, yeah, <laughs> you can play cricket. I don't know. No, nah, man. The point I'm like, making is. The point I'm just trying to get at is when many youngsters watch this and other people who are maybe non-Muslim watch this, because mm. I know some, funny enough, at work you might be watching, yeah? Mm. And to them, like, like life is about that. Like, they'll go fishing. Like, one of the guys told me the other day, he's on site. Like, I go to the builders' merchants. They know me apparently through the bridge, yeah? yeah. <laughs> I've done watch one of your bits. <laughs> and he was like, I'm going fishing. And I'm like, what are you doing fishing? Because, oh, we're just going to get pissed and... And obviously he's cool, so I'm not going to judge him or anything. I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. Like, that's their thing, isn't it? So for us, we don't do that. But to them, they perceive that's not fun. So if I just went fishing and I just fished, just calm, no drinking, no nothing. To them, that might be boring. But they don't understand, for me personally speaking, like the, the tranquility I have of just being there and being still. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you now? That's my piece. Yeah. It's not the loud music. Mm. It's just being calm and being able to just think and ponder. Yeah, that's yeah. my piece. Yeah, the hearing the birds chirp. Yeah, that's my piece. Just being normal again. You understand? Just that's that's it, bro. But for them, that's fun. So that's what I was trying to understand. Like, what is the difference now that you're you're practicing? Is it more fun practicing? Or yeah, is it more I, fun. I, I being... find, yeah, bro. For me, when I go to the mosque, it's like not, it puts a massive smile on my face. Mm. When I wake up, do wudu and pray fajr, like I feel great. Mm. Okay, there's it. a brother from the masjid, so he's telling me. He said, "Look, you know what." There'd be days. First, he said, look, every Sunday would be a depressing day. Mm. Friday, Saturday, go partying. But Sunday, because he's thinking on Monday, either it's kind of like, you know, school, yeah. college or work. Sunday's depressing. On mm. Monday, usually first day back work or whatever is depressing. Yeah. And there'd be moments in his like week, hours, sometimes a day or something, even during the week, he's not happy. Mm. He said, when he's come to the dean every day of the week, mm. including Sunday, it's been a happy day. Yeah. But- yeah. I feel so like see yeah. where I practice and I'm taking it more serious now. I I feel happiness mm. before I feel emptiness, and this is the whole reason why I start taking Dean serious again mm. because anything else I was trying wasn't helping. Mm. I was drinking my life away, you know, partying mm. on the roads, mm. you know, doing craziness, falling out with people, robbing people. Like I was doing the utmost craziness that like my actual production name and is Dirty Sag. That's what they call me. Okay. Still, yeah? <laughs> well, You're gonna have to change that. <laughs> Clean yeah, Sag. Clean Sag. Sag from now, yeah? <laughs> yeah, bro. So they used to call me yeah, the, the Dirty Sag and that. Yeah. Like, it was proper bad, man. <laughs> you get me? Mm. It's a lot. Of, you know what it is? Uh, in the moment, there's fun. Mm. But the cost of that fun always outweighs the fun. Mm-hmm. Do you get know what I'm trying to say yeah. to you? Like, you might be raving and drinking. Like, to be fair with me, going back many years, I never drank, never mm. in my life. 
And when people used to go rave and all of this stuff, there'll probably be two of us that are the most clean, you know, everything that's happening. Mm. Who's holding what, who's, when something's about to start. We, nothing never used to happen to us. Why? Because we're clear, everything is just, it's like you're above it looking down at everything. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's like when you're drinking though, is you're not even conscious of what you're doing. Yeah, no. Nah. Do you know what I'm it's trying to say to you? So whatever mind. fun that you yeah. even had, you can't even remember. Mm. And then say you kill someone or you get into a rape case or whatever you've done in alcohol, mm -hmm. the cost of it always outweighs that fun you had anyway. And anything that comes with it, if I'm a drug dealer and I'm making millions of pounds, the cost of me losing a friend, getting shot, or so-called even friends trying to shoot me for my money, that cost will always outweigh the money I gain. Mm. Because I can't have fun with that money. Who am I going to... What's the point of throwing money into the air? Who am I, who am I sharing it? Yeah, and that's... I'm at that point now. Like, what's the point, man? Who, yeah. who am I doing all of this for? Like, who am I living for? Like, you know? And like, before I used to live for everything. Like, that's how moments. I moments. I wanted everything. I wanted the nice cars. I wanted a house. I wanted all, like everything. Mm. Like, nice clothes. I wanted all the materialistic things. Yeah. And, and I was buying everything. You know what I'm saying? I was getting everything. I was managing, like, you know. And when you get it, what's the feeling? It's like you're happy for a day or two like, and then you just get bored of it. Exactly. And then it's just dead, man. It's on to the next one. Yeah, it's dead and you just get bored of it. And I'm like, you know what? It got to the point, I'm like, you know what? This ain't the purpose of my life. Mm. And I just start taking more things serious. As in like, you know, start thinking about when my dad passed away. I'm thinking, oh, all these other deaths are happening now. Bear through and all that. I'm with my mom now. I'm looking after my mom. I'm like, you know what? I had to change my ways. Sure. You get me? I had to. And, or, like, you know. You got kids as well? No, not yet. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing I was going to add to, you know, so like, you worship Ibadah. Mm. It's uh, more than just praying mm. and, uh, you know, like fasting and so on. So anything that brings us closer to Allah mm. and Allah, you know, is pleased and accepts its worship, its Ibadah. So sometimes it's like we had a little trip. Yeah, a few weeks, two weeks ago, we went to the seaside. Mm. Brothers, you know, we're not drinking, we're not swearing. We prayed our salah, we went to a masjid, prayed the Hor Asr, mm. went to the seaside, played a bit of football and so on. But that's also ibadah, worshipping Allah, mm. and you enjoyed it. Yeah. So sometimes also, of course, observing the prayer and doing the other acts that we need to do. Mm. There's other things you can do within Islam. Yeah. And I think you mentioned it last week or, or, or one of the podcasts where you mentioned that the principle is everything is halal to do. The exception is the haram, which Allah is list, listed in the Messenger yeah. of Allah. So and many things. It's minimal. And it's minimal. That's why it's listed. <laughs> and if you list minimal. the halal, you know, it's too much. When people look at religion, they think there's so many things you can't do. It's like, no, bro, it's probably about 10 fingers that you can put up. This, this, yeah. this, this, that. The that's rest. A, that's, a, that's another thing that used to like put me off. I'm sure it puts off a lot of people when people say, oh, this, you got to do this, you got to do that. Then. And then when the way sometimes people explain Islam to people, it's like, there's a million rules. Yeah, yeah. And there's a million rules for this. You got to do this. You got to say this prayer for this. You got to say this prayer for that. It's like, <laughs> when do I get to live? Or yeah. when do I get to just chill? That, it that, does. You that's Abdul Latif. Two, oh, two, two years ago. That's two years ago. That was him. <laughs> I got you first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for him to stop so I could or, say that's you. If it's not that, they'll be like, oh, yeah, it just Islam just sounds um like. Just hard. Like, it just sounds like bullies or type of, type of thing. Like, you just want to control your women and then, and, and, you know, things like that. They just try to put you off, innit? Sorry, I say, we always say you get me. <laughs> you know what? It's ignorance. Mm. It's just ignorance. And even the people that used to give us advice when we were young and tell us you can't do this and that at the same time, it's ignorance. And what's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu when he said something about um, that you've pushed that person away from Islam or something like this? There's a hadith on it, like, due to someone's ignorance, you push oh. them away. No, I think there was, oh, was the, the one when, who when, he had an when injury. He, when he died? Yeah, because uh, he had an injury mm. and he had to do ghusl. He had to take a bath. So he came and asked some some of the sahaba and said, look, you know, I need to take a bath, but I'm injured. They said, you still need to do it. You need to do ghusl. You need to have a shower and a bath. He had it, but he, he died from it because, yeah. you know, the wound was in the head and the water went in and so on. The Prophet became upset. He said, you've kind of like killed him. It would have been enough for him to do the dry ablution, mm. you know, with the earth and so on. Mm. So that shows you like... That's the ignorance yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. See, that 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 right there is a story if you understood it. What, mm. what does that mean? A person who's making mistakes or whatever, you, in your good intentions, look what, look what the person I'm saying. In your good intentions, you've killed him. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. To you? So the good intentions is clear, but 
whatever sin that's happened to him now, it's on you. Yeah. Because you push them away from that. Mm-hmm. You're the one due to your lack of ignorance rather than asking someone who's a scholar who's more learned. Yeah. You've given him that advice straight away. That person's gone further into their mm. downfall. Mm-hmm. That's on your head. Definitely. And that's on many of our heads. Might be on your head, man. <laughs> Watch yourself. Yeah? It's crazy. It's mainly back in the... And it was mainly the Muslims that used to be like... Yeah, yeah, of course. Is try to put my off. And app- apparently, I haven't looked into the statistics, but Muslims... They say when it comes to social media are like the most negative towards their own people. So mm-hmm. like so if a Muslim does something in the comments section, it will be the Muslims quick to say stuff for Allah and you know what you're doing and you're bad and you're going to go to jail. It's like, why, why not DM the person? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why I was just saying that's the internet. Number? Internet's the internet. Bro. But that's the like, internet. But yeah, what I'm yeah. saying is you don't see the non-Muslims because the non-Muslims are, they're not here, they're there. Yeah. They're not, Muslim Bilal was saying, he was telling me, he said, uh, a friend of his was looking into Islam. Yeah. So he called him. He said, look, I'm looking into Islam. I'm going to watch some of your videos and stuff. So he started watching some of his videos, some of his kind of like, you know what, uh, lectures and reminders. Then he calls him and he says, and Muslim Bilal's telling me, he goes, he goes, you know, you speak about Muslim unity and brotherhood and sisterhoods. I'm reading some of the comments and the names are like Muslim names. But they're hating on you and they're cussing you and they're saying this and this. Mm. He goes, no, no, no. If this is your brotherhood and this is your religion, I don't want to be Muslim. So mm. sometimes, you know, we, we are haters, yeah, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Is, anyway, moving on anyway. So, alhamdulillah, now you're practicing. Mm. You know, you're, you're, you're trying, mashallah. Let's just wrap it up for us now. What is it that you would say to your younger self, you know, advice that you would give yourself or to the youngsters maybe watching mm. to you know, stay away from some pitfalls or maybe some advice that you can just give? Um, Stay strong, man. And you get me? Don't let weakness get to you. Because obviously a passing of someone in your family could turn, make you very weak. Mm. And like me, I'd use that, like my father's death as an excuse for all my bad ways. Mm. You know, I've always said, yeah, yeah, because my dad's died. I ain't got my dad. I haven't got my dad. No one's been there to show me how to be a man. No one should, like, you know, and I've always used that as an excuse. And did, did, did you find that that shut down the conversation? Because people yeah. was like, well, what does it mean if your dad is there? No one's willing yeah, to say that. Yeah, it's just like I'm shutting it down, basically. Yeah. Like, yeah, damn, that's it. My dad's there. That's it. That's all you need to know. Yeah. I'm going through some shit. <laughs> you get me? Mm. Yeah, man, just you got to be stronger than that, man. Mm. Like, you get me? You got to be much stronger than that. Never dwell on the past as well. You get me? That's it, man. Just got to keep strong. Keep your mind strong. Mm. Don't let anything... Don't let anyone tell you nothing. <laughs> mm. Do your own research. That, me, I just done my own research. Okay. I just start going on Google. You know, even certain surahs, I forgot. I start, I learned again just by going on the internet. Mm. Like, you know, educate yourself. MashaAllah. Oh, you have to. Shukran for coming, Akhi. Barakallah feek, may Allah reward you. It's been an interesting discussion. Just want to finish off with, inshallah, last thing, inshallah. So uh, we like also, you know, part of your legacy to be the people watch this and they hear you know some Quran from you so they can listen to that will inshallah be on your mizan of hasanat you know your scale of good deeds on the day of judgment so inshallah any surah that you want to recite or, or a verse whatever you feel comfortable with yeah. bismillah we're going to say it's clean saj yeah <laughs> recitation of clean saj <laughs> production of clean saj <laughs> but anything else anything anything a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim tabbat yada bilahbi wa tab Ma agna anhu malu ma kasab sayas la naran zata la biom ratu hamala talata fiji di ha hablum mim masad. Mashallah, Barak Lofi. Bizakula khair for coming, bro. May Allah bless you in whatever goodness you're doing. Thank you, family. Help you, help you in your Islam and your family, inshallah. Inshallah. And inshallah, we will catch up, bro. Yeah. Barak Lofi. And until the next one, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaykum.